All right, now we're joined by Representative Zach Hutchins, who's running for King County Elections Director. So go ahead with a two-minute introduction. At a time where uh, the right to vote is being challenged across this country, where you're being attacked uh, for trying to get higher turnout, where people are willing to say, no, 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 we're not going to try that, I think King County should be the opposite of that. I think that King County should be the star, the beacon of light across the country for how elections are run. Uh, we've been doing a great job since 2004. We've had over 7 million ballots without any discrepancies. And that's just why I'm running, because we need to build on those successes. And then we need to look at how do we increase participation, how do we increase um, access. And it goes beyond just putting more ballot boxes out into the neighborhoods. I think it's about using data. I think it's about a vision. It's about implementing the strategic plan that the Elections Department has done. And it's about building on the record that I have in the legislature. This office is incredibly important. That's why I jumped in. It was a surprise. I had a bunch of uh, friends and colleagues call me and say, you should consider this. Um, in a matter of a couple of days, I recognized that this was too important uh, to just simply uh, hope somebody good wins. Uh, we need somebody with a record, uh, somebody that knows how to run a good campaign, somebody that knows how to talk to voters. Uh, and I believe that I've got that experience to be able to work in a fair way. Uh, you look at my record on integrity to work with the Republicans when needed, but rooted in 30 years of Democratic campaign. I, mean, I can tell you every campaign I've worked on for a Democrat since 1984. I've been elected seven times, uh, and I've worked on progressive Democratic issues and brought Republicans along. Um, I think that's what we need in this elections office, is something that's fair and is looking at participation and access, and it's just too important to let somebody uh, who doesn't have that experience move into this office. It's a political job, uh, and it's a tough job, we need somebody, I think, with my background and my experience. So that's why I'm running. Great, thank you. So now we have our four prepared questions. We're asking all candidates for King County elections. They're actually on that sheet. You can turn it over if you'd like to read along as we read them aloud. These are two minute answers. And Clayton, would you start with number one? Sure. <clears throat> this year, King County elections moved the deadline for submitting voter pamphlet statements to just three business days after the filing deadline. It's really limiting the amount of time for to draft their statements and for organizations to make endorsements. What steps would you take to extend this deadline next year? Uh, whatever I can do. I think that uh, I, I think that filing maybe needs to move up. I think filing uh, is a, it's the key. Who gets in and who doesn't? And every week during filing, you see uh, candidates decide maybe they don't have the support, maybe they're not going to do it. Uh, I think it's also the time when organizations recognize that somebody's not going to file. I can't remember in my time when an incumbent waited until filing week to not say they're going to run again. I mean, I think that's really a surprise. Uh, and I can tell you that today I started at the 46, I'm here at the 36, I'm going to the 32nd, I've got King County, all endorsement process. Um, and it's tough to get through that process, to utilize that in a voter pamphlet statement, if you've only got three days to do it. So I think it's um, important to have more time. And the easiest way is not just to move the voter pamphlet out, because ballots have to start going out about July 15th, but um, putting together a, a voter pamphlet shouldn't be that hard. I mean, we, we do it every, every year. Um, so pushing that out a little bit, maybe we can find that up a little bit as well, uh, will help both of those situations. More time is better. It's better for organizations. It's better for voters. They're going to get more information. Uh, whatever I can do to make that happen is a smart thing to do. Great. So, remain number two. What can King County elections do to encourage voter registration? Um, everything. I mean, this is these are the people that register voters, right? So uh, they're the ones that should encourage it. From a state policy, we've seen a number of uh, pieces of legislation go through. I've supported them. My seatmate, for example, has got a, a bill that would uh, pre-register 16 and 17 year olds. Uh, I've supported election day registration. And those both don't look very progressive when you look at Oregon automatic registration. I think those are the kind of things that uh, that you should start. I mean, you know, registration should not be a hurdle. And same day registration, as an example, uh, is not as scary as people think. I mean, it's been working in Wisconsin for years and years and years, uh, especially with more uh, computers and better uh, databases. Uh, this it should not be that hard to do. So they should encourage the voter registration everywhere. They should make it easy for other organizations to register voters. Um, we should work with pre-registration. I mean, there are a number of specific policies that we can push forward. 
And then the elections office should work statewide. My experience uh, with the auditors in Olympia is that they're often fuddy daddy wet blankets. That they say, oh, we don't try this, be careful. And when it comes to counting ballots, that prudency is awesome. You really want that. It's a good thing to be prudent and careful and meticulous. When it comes to being an incubator of innovation, we should do that in King County. We should try new things to figure out how do we increase participation, how do we increase registration, how do we increase access. Um, and uh, I'll give you another example. Now, my seatmate Steve Burquist and I um, are getting the King County elections folks to put actual real ballots in the student elections in high schools. Uh, and that, you want to talk about a way of doing incubation and innovation, like, here's a real way of taking real process and using it in a mock fashion. Right? So you don't want to experiment on real ballots. Uh, there is a way of doing it without experimenting on real ballots. You experiment uh, on small pilot projects to increase um, access, to increase participation, to increase research. Okay, Jason, number three. What can King County elections do to encourage voter turnout? Uh, I think that's it's a, it's a very similar answer. Uh, <clears throat> the first thing is I think you should start with data. Look at the data, see where people are turning out, and see where they're not. Uh, there's uh, a bunch of, I think, um, generalizations. I think more drop boxes is a good idea. Uh, and I think it's also a simple answer. Uh, the drop boxes shouldn't just be put willy nilly. And, and, Although we would like it, you can't put drop boxes only in Democratic precincts, right? You have to look at <laughs> what makes sense, right? Rats. Uh, <laughs> what makes sense? And so I think what makes sense is having them in places where people will expect them. So every city hall should have a drop box, for example. Not urban centers, which is the current definition, but city halls. Because people think about government, they think of city halls. It wouldn't hurt to have them in every post office. Because then people are taking the ballot uh, to the mailbox. And if they don't have a stamp, it makes it really easy to put one in the ballot box. Uh, and so you don't have to worry about the cost of a stamp, which is sometimes a hurdle, especially as we move towards more digital. Even having a stamp is kind of a pain in the neck sometimes. Um, so that's simple stuff. Where do we put them? In Texas, they did early voting, uh, and they put, uh, they put back boxes in every grocery store. Um, and so this is Texas, not always the most progressive place in the, in the country, but they're looking at how do they uh, allow folks to get their ballots uh, in as well. Uh, so those are, that, that's just process. When you look at the data, the last data I saw showed that actually uh, the precincts around drop boxes had lower turnout, and I think that we have to overcome that. So just putting a ballot box there doesn't mean that it attracts ballots. Right? I mean, it's sort of a uh, lead a horse to water kind of thing. The issue to me is about how, how we have reach out to communities that are growing in King County. We reach out to diverse communities, the communities that I represent now. We build content. We show them why elections are important. We show them why their voice matters. Uh, and uh, I can give you another whole line about why you know, elections matter. And point to a number of races in the State House, for example, that have come down to a few um, pieces. It's about education. It's about process. It's about access. That's how you increase turnout. Great. Mary, number four. As the world moves from paper to digital information, how can agencies that conduct elections ensure that the voting remains anonymous, votes are counted accurately, and the public trusts the process? Uh, you know, this question should be the core. This is the core. This is the nut, right? This is what the, the entire operation is supposed to do. And I think you get to that through transparency. And that means that everybody gets to see the whole process, people are invited into the whole process. I think of those tours, if you go to the, the Treasury Department, they have these tours where the people walk through and you can see the glass and you can see all the money moving around, right? Um, or if you go to a, a, a beer plant, you can see all the beer bottles running through the factory. I think working in that open, transparent world is, is the default, um, because that's how you create trust. It's about reaching out and active communication. Uh, it's about uh, little things. I'll, I'll tell you, uh, as a voter in King County, right, all your voters in King County, being able to go on the website and say, did you get my ballot? And you can track your ballot in the process. I think that's huge. Like those, That's a little technology issue, um, and it's huge for uh, making people feel better. Oh, they got my ballot. It's OK. Uh, I think that there needs to be a lot of work done around making sure people trust the machines, they trust the process um, as well. There's always going to be a little uh, issues around that. I come out of Amazon.com, I come out of Microsoft. Uh, I oversee about $2 billion of information technology projects at the state level, currently in my current role. Uh, and um, it, it, the projects are complicated. 
technology can solve some of these problems, but actual face-to-face -face talking to folks and opening the process up is really what keeps this core. Anonymous voting, accurate voting, limited discrepancies or zero discrepancies, and striving to be the best in the nation for all of this. Great, so now we'll open up to follow-up questions. These are one-minute answers. So Elizabeth, please. So um, what is your philosophy regarding the possibility of internet voting? Um, uh, I, internet voting to me is, I think, uh, very similar to uh, you know, robot cars. Uh, it, it, they, they exist, and it sounds good. I don't think people trust them. Uh, and all you need is one problem for everybody to sort of blow up the whole system, right? I mean, one robot car gets into an accident, and nobody's ever going to use it for 20 years. Uh, they have to be 10 times better than anything else. Uh, there are some uh, elections that are held on the internet. I mean, King County Conservation District has some um, shareholder elections are held by internet. The standard is much higher for what we do, and I think that that needs to be the focus. Is uh, what? How do you build trust? How do you move slowly so that people know what's going on? And I can tell you that um, I worked in technology for years and years. I do a lot of work on cybersecurity. And uh, you have to have a really high bar uh, for people to feel comfortable about what's going on. We don't want our voting system hacked. We just don't want that manipulated. We don't want that possibility. We don't even want to have that discussion because it calls everything else we do in government in, into um, debate. And we shouldn't do that. And the elections office should be about uh, above board. And there's always the question of verifiability. Absolutely. We have to be careful about that, though, because many folks say, oh, you know, an ATM kicks out a receipt, and I want a piece of paper. And, you know, that you don't want a piece of paper that you can then go take to somebody and say, oh, I voted for you, can I have my five bucks, or something like that. But, <laughs> well, it doesn't happen here, but, you know, in New Jersey or Chicago yeah. or someplace, it's certainly uh, <laughs> suggested that that might happen in the past at some point. <laughs> Liz and Lincoln. So I have just full disclosure, I, I moved here from New Jersey. Okay. Where, 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 <laughs> where, I worked in the lunch. Yeah. <laughs> where, she, where she voted regularly and often and more than once per I, I <laughs> voted legally like most people in New Jersey really do. Yeah. <laughs> I've worked elections in New Jersey and, um, mm -hmm. and the, the participation is awesome. But, you know, it's sort of like, uh, I think, kind of an urban myth, right? There's some. Yeah. There's right. some yeah, Other stuff we, people talk about. I know, there were, we had a reputation, yes. Um, but uh, that said, um, I did want to ask you about automatic voting. In Oregon, they've moved, or automatic registration, excuse me, they've, they've moved to a system where um, folks are registered at their addresses, and then when they move, that information from the post office is, is used to register them at the new place. And um, it becomes a situation where the the onus for registration is on is on us, the state, and, and the folks who work very hard on elections, and is not on the poor guy who's trying to move. So um, I am wondering if that's if that's interesting to you. If you see Seattle moving that way in the future, if you see Washington State moving that way in the future, I think Washington State entertains progressive ideas. Making it easier to vote, making it easier to register is a progressive idea. Uh, it, it wasn't always a progressive idea. We need registration. I spent a couple of months in Baghdad um, during the Gulf War getting them ready for the first elections. And building a registration database was a very interesting kind of first um, operational issue. How do you build a database? Which lists do you use? They started using food rationing cards as the basis of that. And then the philosophical why do this, and how do you track folks to make sure there's no fraud. From an operational standpoint, you need registration, because we've got to keep track and make sure people aren't voting and that sort of thing. But the barriers and um, the hurdles should be as low as possible. Automatic registration, especially in this day and age, with um, databases and the way they work, it should, it should be very easy. We track folks, we're, we're building systems now at the state to track folks across their business licenses and their um, uh, motor vehicle license and the cosmetology license so that it all comes together in one place. And this isn't Big Brother, this is about customer service. It's about service delivery. It's about uh, being the best in the country. Thank you. Clayton, then Renee. This is the physical map from elections that I use to track our PCOs as they come and go. We're not like that in the It's not a scale data. 
Right. <laughs> um, uh, to get this map, I had to go to Renton, down I-5, across 405, and don't reply to you, I says by history. Um, <laughs> and I designed for this short in so okay. uh, I am familiar with this map. And I don't mind driving them, per se, but driving down there to get a map is mad. Uh, and it, it, it seems crazy to not have elections in the largest city in the state. Um, all of this came out of the 2004 Great War um, aftermath. Um, is there any chance of getting elections back in Seattle? Well, As in terms of its headquarters, um, perhaps. Uh, it, it, what's interesting to me about your question is uh, it, a problem is the map. And, or having access to these folks. And maybe you don't need to move the entire office back to the most expensive real estate in the entire state. And those decisions will be made by the county council. Right? They say, you're gonna be in Issaquah, they move you out to Issaquah. Um, I think the issue, though, is about openness and about accessibility. I've been to the election site, I can get that map, and I click on it, and it's this teeny, tiny, little, bitty thing on the screen, and when you go to print it, it's you know jammed up onto a tiny little piece of paper. It's almost worthless. Uh, there are other places in the nation, and I can think of, I worked elections in Chicago, and they have precinct maps, they have uh, district maps, they have city maps, and, it is a, and they are available in multiple locations. And I think when you're talking about 1.3 million voters and an urban area the size of King County, uh, it is difficult to have them only in Renton. I mean, even if it's just off the freeway and Brady Way, why aren't they at King County? Why don't they have a branch office where you can register to vote, where you can do these other things? Um, why don't we have one in Bellevue on the east side? That's the kind of stuff that should, that should be easy to do. And maybe you don't need to move the entire operation to downtown to do that, but it's about people feeling like they can go this. You don't have to go to one location and get your driver's license your name. There are many places. It's about making government work better. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was doing so well on so many. <laughs> so uh, my question is again about automatic registration. This is my answer. So, I'm interested in the younger voters, like the, the 16 to 24 year old group. Um, well, at least getting engaged, 18 or whatever. Um, driver's license, automatic registration, is that something just the county can do, or would that have to be something like, you know, we was just talking about automatic registration? Is that something that would have to be a statewide effort first, or are these things that the county can take on by themselves? Um, if I'm a legislator, say, oh, we have to press a law. Right. And I put my, my election hat on, I'm like, oh no, the elections department can do that. <laughs> I think, um, so I, I don't have a specific answer. I think if there's legislative authority, then that makes sure everybody's okay. The election laws have to be above board and consistent across all uh, across the entire state. So um, I don't have a solid answer for you, but my impression would be that it would have to happen at this state. I think that the county can lead the way in starting that or facilitating that. And I say that because 80% of all voters um, come into the process, they get registered through voter voter, and, they, um, and we have this database. So you get a driver's license at 16, we know who you are. You just don't let them vote until they're 18. Right. And then when they turn 18, either you flip it to an automatic registration okay. as if they were standing there at 18, right. or you figure out how to contact them and say, hey, do you want to get registered? So um, this is not a technology issue. I think this is a real issue. And it's about lowering those uh, barriers, and I totally support it. Let's lower the barriers. Let's figure out how to make it easier for people. Thanks. Good. We have time for maybe one more question, Elizabeth uh, or Mary. Mary, you have one. Um, I had a question. You've uh, been involved with voting in New Jersey, and Chicago, and Baghdad. Uh, how did that happen? Who were you looking for, and what was your uh, job specifically? I mentioned that. Well, first of all, I'm just I am passionate about elections. I'm a total elections dork. Um, and I think I got that way because um, uh, my family bounced around a little bit with the military and my mother uh, was a professor of economics. Uh, when I was in high school, before I could vote, I was involved in the, as a volunteer in the closest congressional election in the country, came down to 47 votes. Mm -hmm. And in that process of the recount, congressional campaigns needed every volunteer they could get and I helped with that process and I was like, wow, I can make a difference here. Uh, and so that's what really empowered me uh, to later run for office, but to recognize that one person really 
can make a big difference. Mm -hmm. uh, I worked on campaigns. I can tell you every campaign I worked on as a volunteer or paid uh, since 1984. Um, that's how I got out here doing voter education, voter um, uh, access, constituent lobbying work. Uh, and so I bounced around the country working on campaigns, uh, helping people get elected, helping government work well. So I've got a lot of different places. I ended up in Baghdad because I've done other international work, political party building, capacity building for NGOs, um, and preparing the inter interim Iraqi national parliament for their first elections. Um, and so I feel like I've got a deep experience. I've been elected for 13 years, seven times on the ballot myself. Uh, those of us that are elected pay attention to that process. So that's how I bounced around, because I worked on campaigns, uh, and then I run for election, and, uh, and so that expertise, I, I would love to share. Great, so we're about out of time. If you want to take 30 seconds for a closing statement. Um, well, thank you for the questions. Thank you very much for coming in on Saturday morning. Uh, I've been elected, like I said, seven times, and people that listen to us have got a great fortitude uh, because some of us are smart and some of us aren't as candidates. So I very much appreciate you taking the time and listening to everybody. Um, I've done a lot of good work at the state. I am rooted in progressive values. I think I can do a great job at this. I'm, uh, I didn't get in uh, to just increase my name recognition. I got in to win, uh, to run a great office, uh, because I'm passionate about elections, and I think that uh, King County really can be a leader in the nation. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you.